what are smart cities and what is the city of the future, Kamal? Well, um, yeah, it's of course a tough question to answer, right? But uh, let me just uh, try to take a stab at what we think the cities of the futures are. If you think about the fact that w what's actually changing today is we have technology that allows us to be more interconnected, to, to collect more data about daily events, about things that are happening in the city all over the place. You can monitor your bus stations, you can, you can put CCTV cameras on, you can do a lot of things with technology today that allows you to look at the city in all its complexity. And cities are amongst the most complex systems that humans ever created. And there are two aspects to this, right? The one is, you know, cities are the most resilient entities that exist on this planet. If you think about how many cities have been bombed or destroyed and they still exist and are flourishing, it's a pretty remarkable system of systems. But in the same vein, if you think about the fact how hard it is to change resilient systems, the question that we need to ask ourselves, um, how do we improve the life of people in cities? How do we improve city infrastructure in such a way that we maintain the ecosystem, that we maintain the economic stability, but at the same time bring in improvements that will impact people's lives? Uh, we believe that technology can make a significant difference to that. I think if you look into the cities of future, um, if you just think about what you can do with technology in conjunction with the right kind of policy changes, in conjunction with the right kind of scientific discoveries, um, there is a tremendous opportunity to, especially here in Africa, that's a slightly different point, but especially here in Africa, to create city ecosystems that don't exist anywhere else in the world. Thank you very much. So I'm hearing really that it's about the city, about giving people access to information when they need it, be able to uh, get cities moving very efficiently, of course, using technology. Absolutely. Uh, so talking about integration, and we spoke earlier uh, the, today with the, the, the session uh, in the morning, when we spoke with the cabinet secretary about the ICT master plan and all these systems that the governments are putting together, uh, maybe Louis, you can, can tell us how this can create a smarter city. Uh, how, how can we make it in such a way that all the systems are integrated and talking to each other? Because to me, I think smart is equal to connected equals to integration. So is it, is it possible, for example, if a police officer stops you, all they need to do is take a picture of your, of your license plate or your number plate, and then they know if you've paid insurance, they know if you've paid taxes, they know who you are, they know if there's an arrest warrant against you, paid a court fine or not paid a court fine. And more importantly, because that police car has a GPS system, the station where that policeman comes from knows that they have actually stopped somebody somewhere, so the government should expect some money in maybe a possible fine. Uh, thank you, uh, Governor. I think in terms of government's role in setting the environment, to me it's really an exercise about putting together a platform that allows for that kind of stuff to happen. Um, it needs to be a platform that's, that allows for privacy. It needs to be a, pla a platform that allows for a, a secure platform. It needs to be a platform that allows for interoperability. And, and, and the reason that's important is we are not going to try, what government should not try and do is try and solve the problem. What we need to do is to create the platform that allows for that to happen. Um, the kind of platform you want to have in place is one that allows essentially for three things. One is for collecting of information. Other part of it is one around, allows for the analyzing of that data. And the last thing is the presenting of that data 
so that people can do the innovative things that they need to do. Before we even get into all that, in the context of Kenya, when we talk about smart cities, smart counties, smart government, I just want to recognize a couple of mega trends across the world. As we sit here today, 50% of the population is in urban areas. It is scary to imagine that in 2050, 75% of the population will be in urban cities. It's not sustainable. Okay? I think in Kenya, more than anywhere else, at this time, we have an opportunity to look at this thing called devolution, to slow that trend down. Even better, to reverse it. And the way you want to reverse that is, in my mind, do three things. One, you kind of need to deliver services in counties so that people don't have to come into cities for those services, in health services, education, and all the things. You kind of need to facilitate trade between counties. We talked about this last night. We have to create the opportunity for counties to trade. Mombasa to trade with Turkana. Nairobi to trade with Mandera. It is not sustainable for us to sit in the situation we are in today where Nairobi, um, Yambu, and, 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 and Mombasa account for up to 80% of the economy. The, there's no upside, or relatively, there's less upside in focusing on those three counties. There's far more upside in focusing on the other 42 counties, as I said yesterday. So we need to create, or we need to put a platform that allows for trading opportunities between counties. The last thing is, and in the process, you need to create jobs in counties. If you do those things, there's no reason why people will want to move from counties to some of the urban areas. So the devolution initiative we have going on here is an opportunity for us to do, uh, to do just that. And so the platform that ensures we do that in a secure way, in a private way, and in a way that is interoperable, allows for people to develop at their own paces, um, and, and, but yet we can, we can gain from the economies of those things. Thank you, Louis. Um, yeah, I think, I think you're really right. It's about that delivering the services down to the citizen using technology very efficiently and most importantly sharing of information between government, between businesses, uh, between, uh, between the citizen, you know, for it to be really easy for a citizen to plug into data, and, and I know there'll be a session about open data that will come in next, into data, and they can use that data to use in computer to, to that they can use that data to make decisions about uh, how they operate their lives. Um, Catherine, Kwanzaa City. We've heard so much about Kwanzaa City. We know it's going to be a business incubation, somewhere where people can go and create technology products, uh, and most importantly, nurture local talent uh, in the IT world. So we are creating a technopolis. Just tell us a little bit more about what effect Kansas City is going to have in a city of the future and how it's going to help the counties uh, and the citizens to get there. Oh, you can't, okay, sorry. I was advised to sit here so that you can look this way and not turn away from the mics. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, yeah, we're just talking about Kansas City and how it will enable cities of the future or counties of future in Kenya to really become smarter cities and uh, nurture talent of the young people to be able to solve our problems or create solutions using ICT. Thank you very much. Uh, I know there is so much interest in Kwanzaa City and I was trying to think, where do I start? But I like the question is asked. And one advantage that we have in Kansas City, which I don't know if other counties will have, but we are thinking of similar Kansas, is we are starting from a green field. But a huge advantage. This is an opportunity to have a well-planned city. And that's what we've been doing in Kansas. A city that is walkable. When I'm talking about Konza, when I stood in that field, what I visualized is a walkable city. 
a green city and a smart city. Smart in the sense that I don't want a situation where I've put my fiber optic down there and somebody of Rhodes comes tomorrow and digs it up. A place where we are sharing infrastructure, I mean clear shared infrastructure. A place where the technology is at the hub of everything. In the sense that, for example, you see water trickling down somewhere, like what happens in Nairobi. Who do you go report to, for example? But if you use the technology effectively, from the central point, you can be able to know there's water leakage here and how can we deal with that. So when I'm talking about Konza, Konza is going to be a walkable city, a green city, a smart city. Green in the sense that within the city, the, the boulevards you see in Paris, we are expecting them in Konza. The blocks you see in New York, we have those blocks. So we are mixing the best from the rest of the world. But the advantage we have is that we are in a green field, we can actually plan it effectively and then have technology at the center of it, bring all these uh, startups, the young people, have the university there, have the industry, build on what uh, the cabinet secretary, uh, Adam Mohammed, was talking about, our national systems of innovation. So we have more of the academic talking with the industry and we build our own innovation right from Kansas City. So that's the vision we have right now in a snapshot. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Modise. You know, we are hearing now about all this data being collected, all these systems being put into place to create cities of the future. But how do you bring all this data together? How do you correlate it to understand uh, either a citizen, to understand government? What, what do you do to get business intelligence out of all this data so you can use it effectively? Thank you very much. I think what is critical in terms of the area for data management, firstly make an establishment in terms of who do we communicate with and what information do we communicate with that particular person, be it a customer, a supplier, government, or an internal customer. Which person is this person that works for the city? In that particular instance, Data then comes to assume a very critical and central role. But more important is not only the availability of such data, but the availability of accurate data and which data should be available at all times. But beyond that, I think Based on the advent and availability of various technology, there are various channels in terms of which data can be made available. But more important is the security of such data and the nature and level of access that we open for persons in, access, in accessing that type of data, so as to ensure that from the onset, whatever data we need that we'll put on in our systems will remain clean and pure under all circumstances. But more important, I think the element with regards to elements in regard to reporting comes to occupy another position, which position entails that one, through an understanding of what it is that we're providing, what our current requirements are, having established the basis, we now are in a position to understand the gaps, what the requirements are going to be in order to close those gaps and the kind of time it is going to take us in closing those particular gaps. Which information then should be available on the net, accessible to persons, and calling for additional assistance with regards to anything that we may not be in a position to access. So that under all circumstances, all our stakeholders have got adequate information in terms of what we're communicating with them and the frequency with which we want to communicate. Thank you. 